Hey, y'all, I'm here to share some info about how to archive accounts in your chart of accounts in FreshBooks. Uh, the way I'll show you the technical method to do that is to paste in a quick Loom video that I'd made to demonstrate it for a client. Uh, it's not really hard, uh, but the serious among you will keep listening after that because then I will tell you what accounts I think you should archive and the accounts that I think that you should add. I'm recording this in 2024 and I am committing to always telling y'all my recording date because FreshBooks is changing so fast. So keep checking back in case any of this is updated or give me a call or join my office hours. All right, let's dive in. Hey Nick, a quick little video to show you how to archive your accounts in your chart of accounts because I know you were interested in making sure you weren't selecting accounts you shouldn't select. So we did a bunch for you, but I wanted to also show you how you can do them. So I saved one uh, personal. We should never put anything to personal. And so you just come to the account. Um, we're here in the expenses tab in this case, but come here and you just hit this button archive uh, and you're going to hit archive. And then one more tiny bit of info. If you scroll down, view all archived accounts and you would unarchive it this way. Uh, you can hit this button on archive and it puts it right back if you ever decide change your mind and want it back. All right, hope that was helpful. All right, real quick reminder, you do have to turn on the accountant settings to start making changes to your chart of account. That's down in the settings down on the very bottom of your left blue bar. Um, and another reminder is that when you are in your expenses tab and you go to classify expenses and you find yourself starting to type into that category area and you click create, uh, you are creating a new account in your chart of accounts. Um, you might not know that, but you are. So I wanted to make that very clear. All right, so now let's talk about my thoughts about how you should curate your chart of accounts. We're going to go through the definitely delete uh, items. We're going to do some definitely adds, and then we're going to talk about some gray areas. All right, so first I have some definitely delete. Here's a quick picture of how to turn on advanced accounting so you can make updates to your chart of accounts and other things. Accounting, chart of accounts is how you get there. All right, I said definitely delete. I guess I mean definitely archive. So let's come down to my number one, personal. This category is an accounting joke. Um, I'm guessing that some this is some holdover from when FreshBooks was really old before it was a double entry general ledger accounting software, but there's no such thing as a personal expense on your business profit and loss statement. So um, please archive this so that you're never tempted to accidentally use it. If you make an expense on your personal card, Sorry, if you make a personal expense on your business card, you simply mark that to owner's equity while you're in bank reconciliation. And, and call me if that doesn't make sense. Um, it's not always something that is obvious to new business owners. And FreshBooks doesn't help you by giving you this little happy face that looks like it's safe to use. All right, some more. How about we archive shipping and couriers? I mean, I don't know. Let's just keep that as like postage general. Um, probably don't need, oh, it takes a while. Probably don't need packaging, not a business like mine. I'm just going to put it all the postage, right? What about stationery? Yeah, that's just going to be office supplies for a business like mine. I mean, I guess unless you're writing a lot of letters. We're going to talk more about what you should archive in the gray areas because it's going to be specific to your business. But the thing I want to move to now is the definitely add. So to add a new account, you add it here. You need to understand the difference between the five main headings of in accounting, asset liability, equity, income, and expense. Um, but let's say, for example, I'm going to add an expense, OPEX. This could be a sub-account under other. And here's one. Ask my accountant. You're going to put stuff in there when you have a question, and it'll make it easy for you to pull out and say, hey, I have some questions about these five transactions. Let's talk about them. All right, other things that I think you should add. I like a travel meals category. I like a payment processing fees category uh, because I think it's important for you to know how much, you know, if FreshBooks is your payment processor, how much you're paying FreshBooks payments. If you're using um, any other sort of payment processor and those fees are coming in, Stripe fees, for instance, if you're using Stripe independently of FreshBooks, I want you to know how much you're paying in processing fees to, so that way you can start to analyze should you Find a different way to get paid. If you use a credit card and you ever have credit card interest, I think you need an interest-credit-card account. Um, I don't like the interest-other. I think it's not clear. Um, I want you to see clearly how much you're paying in interest, how much that uh, cost of carrying debt is to get that albatross off your back. Um, if you have a loan, then create one called interest dash 
SBA loan or small business loan or whatever you want to call it, I think it's important for you to see that so it'll prod you to pay it off. I like business meals instead of restaurants and dining, personal preference. Um, so if you add business meals, you're going to want to delete restaurant slash dining. Probably you're going to send some client gifts. I think that's good to pull out. It's also good because your tax preparer needs to see how much you're paying to client gifts. There are rules about what, what, what you can pay. So I think client gifts is a good one. Uh, by the way, I appreciate books and food, like things that I get to pick out from companies like Sugar Wish, for instance. Um, those are some great things that I love to receive. Um, employee reimbursements could be another category that you would create in the chart of accounts. Um, Employee reimbursements are, would be necessary if you have an accountable plan, which you've probably seen my video on about home office and mileage expenses and reimbursing yourself, um, especially if you're an S-Corp, you've got to have one. Um, donations. So I almost always see um, something that the business owner has given to charity. Um, most of us do keep it separate, but there's kind of a gray area, and some of us maybe it's more of an advertising expense, but every once in a while you're just going to make a donation, so that's a, that's a good one to have. Um, if, if you can't call it advertising, like, you know, where you've put your logo on the back of your kid's Little League jersey and you've bought into the Little League, you know, fundraiser that way, that probably could pass as advertising, but maybe you're just giving like a straight cash donation and you want to pull that out well too so your accounting, uh, so your tax pro sees it. One thing to note, in 2024, we can't really do much with our income accounts here, y'all. The, the income side, um, technically you can add but you can't do much with them yet. They're all still getting jammed to a single sales category on your P&L, but they are laying the groundwork. FreshBooks is laying the groundwork for us to have flexibility at the top of our P&L in the revenue section to where we can have maybe a few categories, classes of income. Um, so eventually that's gonna be an important place to spend some time adding, chart, adding accounts in the chart of accounts. Um, you do get a chance to pick what, income category it goes to when you create an item or service. Um, and that's how the groundwork is being laid, y'all. Um, so if you want to not have to change stuff retroactively, you could start to think about that now. What kind of buckets of money do you make? Um, and maybe have two or three income accounts that you map your sales or items or services to. But your reports aren't going to really help yet. Stay tuned. Um, and if you're in my FreshBooks office hours group, you'd be the first to know about these sorts of updates when they do happen. So y'all let me know if anyone is interested in joining my office hours, which is kind of for, which is for business owners who are DIYing their books, but would like to have a FreshBooks Pro in their back pocket. All right. Then I mentioned we have some gray areas or unique situations that you're going to have to decide. So let's talk through some of these. If you're a partnership, you're going to want to create sub accounts under owner's equity for your partner names, and that'll be adjusted at the end of the year. I'm tempted to tell some of you to delete supplies, which we see right here. Um, down here in OPEX, uh, to me, that category always feels a little bit more like a cost of goods. But if you aren't going to use the concept of cost of goods, which I have no problem with you not using, if you're not ready to do that yet, um, then you're going to want to possibly keep supplies. If by this you mean that this is the place where you're going to put supplies that you like buy to get a, a job done. Um, but you're just going to think hard about this one. Are you going to use the concept of COGS? Do you understand COGS? And if you do, and you're putting job supplies up in COGS, I get nervous that you're going to make a mistake and sometimes put stuff that should be COGS to this OPEX supplies. All right, now let's talk about payroll. Uh, it's really tough in FreshBooks. The payroll expense classification classification situation is not great. Um, so you're going to have to think about how you want to deal with that. Uh, there are no payroll integrations that I recommend. And I haven't found anyone, even though I've offered to pay people who've used, who have used who signed up for the new FreshBooks integrated payroll, I've put posts on LinkedIn saying, I will pay you if I can see this. And no one has taken me up on it. But that's not integration. That's like built in. But I've got a hunch that it is not going to be any better than the Gusto integration because it's just white labeled gusto and in the spring of 2024 i haven't heard that it does anything more than what the original gusto integration did um, i hope that there will be a lot of improvements to reconciling payroll in 2024 but you're gonna have to decide how much tough manual work you'll want to do but if you want to avoid doing the extra work uh, as of spring 2024 you can do this really terrible payroll hack that i've come up with for folks who are diying their bookkeeping and if you want to just use just kind of do bank transaction bookkeeping, 
which is, you know, nothing to sneeze at. I'm not making any judgments there. I think you create a parent category in your chart of accounts called payroll expenses, and then create a subcategory of that parent called employee direct deposit, and then another subaccount called total payroll taxes, parentheses, employee and employer. Again, this is a cheat way because FreshBooks doesn't make it easy to break up or split the wages portion of taxes and the employer portion of taxes the way that we're supposed to do it. But that's an option as you're you know, thinking of like these gray areas of what do you want to do with your chart of accounts. Now, here's some more gray areas that are going to be unique to you. But in general, remember, the fewer accounts you use, the better. So I'm going to use two examples of how to think about this. All right, let's take hardware and office supplies here. Um, Let's say you're like me and you work completely from home. And the only thing close to being called hardware you're ever going to buy is like a medium grade laptop and maybe a webcam and surge protector, uh, maybe an office chair. Um, and you'll do like one of those kind of purchases per year. Well, then let's not ever put anything to hardware, OK? Just put that to office supplies. It simply isn't worth having that additional breakout for one or two transactions that aren't material to your business. Um, also, for heaven's sakes, please don't let a tax person talk you into depreciating a $900 laptop, OK? It like not worth it and not easy to handle in fresh books. We want to avoid journal entries. All right, we'll do another example of this uh, gray area that I want to illustrate about um, how you have to think about your unique situation. So FreshBooks gives you a category called reference materials. And it also gives you one called education and training. Now, if you're someone who buys maybe like two business books a year and then pays for like one ticket to a conference, and maybe one online course, well, how about we just not use reference materials and we should archive that one so you don't accidentally use it and then call everything that I just mentioned education. But if you're buying a ton of reference materials, then reference materials does become meaningful to you, and it should be broken out from education. Does that make sense? All right, there's another situation that some FreshBooks users have that is the same account name, but then they have it for COGS and for OPEX. It used to be this really easy mistake that people could make because there was this terrible clickable button on each expense that told you uh, that allowed you to say, Mark as COGS, uh, which is not really counting. That's not how you do it. Um, so thankfully, they've eliminated that bad button, Mark as COGS. But if you've ever used it in the past, you have problems. So if you're classifying your expenses and you start typing a category and you see it come down and that word is showing up two times, one with the black COGS image and then one again with the colorful images for you know supplies or other expenses or whatever, then you need to go uh, edit or archive one of those two so that you don't accidentally get mixed up. Maybe change the name of the COGS one um, by adding like parentheses, um, build to customer or parentheses, direct client projects, something like that. So you know that there's a difference between the COGS and the OPEX version of that. And they won't let you make that mistake going forward, thankfully. The last great area I'll mention has to do with every, whenever you're in your expenses tab and you find yourself adding a new account. Here, let's go look. I'm talking about this box right here. If you ever find yourself deleting this and starting to type where you're going to create a new account, I want you to first go to your chart of accounts and examine what you already have and then delete the default account that FreshBooks has that they might have thought that you should be using for whatever it is that you're buying. Does that make sense? So if you want a custom name, there's a good chance that there's something that's close enough that's already in there. And I don't want you to forget that you would prefer that custom name. So go delete the thing that, you know, the, the fresh books words for that thing that you're creating. The point is, if you add an account, if you add an account, think about can you delete one? And if you can't delete one, that's okay, but you've at least thought about it. All right, archiving accounts in your chart of accounts plus a whole lot more. Thanks for listening. If you need any help, please reach out. You can visit me at heritagebusinessservices.com. If these videos are helpful to you, I would certainly appreciate it if you subscribe to this channel, like the video, and if you go to heritagebusinessservices.com slash support, there's a few ways there that you can say thanks uh, without even having to pay me. <laughs> thanks so much. I'm Kate Josephine Johnson, and I help businesses build their business legacy.